It is enormously safe in in Cambodia, in Siem Reap in particular. The service is very good at all levels. Service is arguably better in Cambodia than it would be in the West. The, um, so we have to capitalize on that whilst dealing with the things that we can still learn here, that we can still grow on. If we make, mix those two, the sky is the limit. I'm with Christian De Boer. He's managing director of Jaya House Hotels and his uh, a terrific success story. He, is ne he has near full occupancy at a time when other hotels are struggling. Uh, Christian, Good morning. how do you do it? Good morning, thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. I think personally tourism has changed. The demands or the expectations of the various guests have changed. People now more and more want um, experiential travel, so they want to learn, they want to grow, they want to be inspired during their holiday. Whilst in the, I don't know, in the 80s or the 70s, Dutch people would go to a Dutch hotel managed by Dutch people and Dutch food. Thank God that has changed and we now uh, don't particularly care about that anymore, but we want to grow, we want to be inspired, we want to learn. And that's what I would like to think we, we tend to offer here at, uh, at Jai House. I also think that um, as a hotel, uh, what is a five-star hotel, has the, the, the way of thinking has changed. In the olden days, that used to be blackout curtains, I don't know, a, a business center and, uh, and a car park that made you a five-star, that now really, really has changed. People, um, certain new items have been considered luxury. As a tiny little hotel, 36 rooms in the middle of nowhere, um, with no sales team, um, we don't have anyone else for and working for us other than myself. Um, we have to do things differently. So we've looked at our guest journey and realized that where a lot of hotels, for instance, still charge for the minibar, um, they charge for the laundry, they charge for, for the spa. I also, I, I think that all of those things, that's a 1980s way of working. What I think is the new luxury is coming back after exploring the, the stunning temples of Angkor Wat, for five, six, seven hours, coming back to your hotel room, sit on your balcony and have a beer, knowing that that beer is paid for and you're not going to pay five, six, seven, eight, nine dollars for that same can of beer that we all know is only 50 cents. The, that is luxury. Giving people the freedom is luxury. Giving no nickel and diming, that's the new luxury. And indeed, the very simple concept of space. Mm. And you've, you've got a, a sustainability and social policy uh, mission as well. I mean, that is a big part of it, is it not? Look, yeah, but that's more common sense. I think that all hotels, all businesses, all humans on this, on this small planet should do that. I think that's nothing really to do with hotel. That is really more common sense. Um, if we know that in the West, in the Netherlands, we recycle less than 5% of our plastic, we think we're good, um, but in reality it's less than 5%. I believe if we simply don't use the plastic, we don't have to recycle. It is 2024, and even eight years ago when we opened, it was 2016. There are so many alternatives now that we don't have to use single-use plastic anymore. It being glass, it being uh, the bottles that we give our guests, um, it being the shampoo bottles that can go into glass bottles and be reused millions of times. It's a more real way of traveling. And um, in our eight years of existence, not one single guest ever has any, ever said anything negative about that concept. So I think people are, re are ready, tourists are ready, travelers are ready for a more sincere approach to running a hotel. And um, that's a wash and away from all of the beautiful marketing terms, um, perhaps even greenwashing uh, efforts by, by certain hotel groups, um, into making it more real, where people can see and feel the difference. And that, I think, is the new luxury. You also look after your staff very well, don't you? Look, again, that is common sense. And, and um, it's all very easy to say that we care for the communities we operate in, and which was at the actual sentence on, on one of the big hotel groups' website. 
that is until something happens and that's when people really need you. Um, and that's for instance in their hour of need when they need medical care um, or, or many of the other stuff. The, that's when a hotel or an employer should stand up and say, don't worry, we'll help you. Mm -hmm. um, that's when you show that you care for the communities you operate in or the people that you work with. Um, and after eight years of, of existence, look, we've proven that. Um, I have countless examples of, of us taking care of our staff um, because that's how it should be. I hope people also take care of me in my personal hour of need whenever I might need it. And this is reflected in the kind of service that... Uh... Well, yeah, but not by design, more by... If you want to, if you're happy in your job, if you want to work somewhere because you know your boss or your owner or your employer takes care of you, that reflects in simply being happy at work. It being, I'm happy to go to work, I'm happy to be busy, and I'm happy to take care of, of the visitors to, mm -hmm. in our case, Cambodia. So I think that's one of the main testaments of, of, um, of, of why our service is perhaps, is perhaps pretty good. I also think that in 2024, hotels and businesses in destinations like Cambodia, we should only offer full-time roles, not seasonal. Not, there's, a, there's hotels in St. Reap that give six-month contracts, eight-month contracts. That is wrong. It should be full-time employment. The fact that in July it's a lot quieter and the rates are a lot less than in, I don't know, December, that's a hotel's issue. That's not a staff issue. The staff shouldn't have to be punished for that. The, that's the management of a hotel should make that work somehow. And, um, uh, and as a result, all the staff could be full-time. I mean, we prove that it's possible. Um, and, and because all my staff is full-time, we do not have seasonal staff. Because my staff has bills to pay in July and in August and in September. The, it is my responsibility to make sure we have an, enough cash flow throughout the year that we can afford all of our staff to be full time. Yes. And for, for tourists, uh, you spoke about the arrival experience. What, what difference? What is it? What does it? A very what difference does it make? A very simple but really ancient uh, way of thinking is uh, is indeed the arrival experience. All of us. Uh, when you go to a new country, when you go to a destination you've never been to before, you land at a airport, you, go in, you get picked up, you go in the car, you drive through certain areas, you drive through a really good area, you think, wow, I hope it's here. You continue driving. Then you go through an area where it's not so good. You think, God, please, not here. Thank God the car doesn't stop. You keep driving. Any hotel should make sure that a circle of 200 meters around their respective properties is desirable. The number one thing in 2024, and this thing has been going on for quite a few years now, um, is greenery around any hotel. A lot of properties in St. Reap, they've got the most beautiful public, public spaces inside their own walls. But then the outside, outside that same wall, is suddenly not so nice. It's that whole area, the circle of 200 meters, that's the, what should be, uh, uh, should invite people, should invite people to walk around, to explore. And um, in 2024, that really is greenery and it is trees and it is plants and it is tropical stuff. The same as more recently, the movements in, in destinations like Paris, uh, Melbourne, uh, Madrid, where the governments there very actively plan trees and reduce streets to create cycling lanes, to create footpaths, and, and an enormous amount of public spaces full of trees and greenery. That's what people want. The, now, I personally think that the government initiatives during COVID of, of indeed creating the cycling lanes and the footpaths and the brand new roads, that is to be applaudable. Um, but we need to continue. We need to continue making that even more tourist friendly. Yes, and you have planted trees outside. Tell me about that. <laughs> A lot. Um, here, I mean, I named the hotel Jaya House River Park. Um, and that is for the very simple reason that almost all decent hotels all over the planet are located on a park. 
Men Oriental, Hyde Park, uh, Columbus Circle, uh, in, in lots of other cities around the world. So I want to do the same. Minor issue for us, uh, eight and a half years ago, there were only five trees here. In fact, right at the beginning, quite a few people said, oh God, you're going to open up a hotel there? We'll never be successful, we'll never work. Um, the area is not good, all of those things. But I knew what we were going to do. So now, eight years later, we're reaching almost 3,000 semi-mature trees. Now, the ones we planted eight years ago, they're now big. Um, but the ones we, the 15 trees we planted yesterday, they're obviously still small. The, um, that's the reason for the name Jai House River Park. And it's also the reason why, I, one of the reasons why we're doing good. The, um, again, it goes down, go, comes back to the circle of 200 meters. And um, recently, about a year ago, together with an NGO called CRST, uh, we have co-initiated Project T. And that saw us plant about 1,200 trees now, I think, in other parts of, of, of Simrip. Uh, again, also semi-mature mm. trees, because trees create shade, they make it nicer, they reduce the heat, and make it all more, far more livable for all of us. And this is something that could be copied by other um, hotels? Please do. Yep. Please copy it. Yeah. The more, the better. The more we work together on this initiative, the better it is for us, for all of us. For mm. us as a destination, for us as a city, for us as people living here, for Cambodia, for its GDP, for the tax income for the destination. Uh, Cambodia also suffers uh, from the rainy season being seen as the low season, being seen as unpopular. Mm -hmm. uh, but you've got, you've got some ideas for that, don't you? Well, look, this is my personal opinion. I think the rainy season is the, the green season, as it's often called, is actually the best season to travel. Uh, it's not as hot. Uh, everything is green, everything grows, there's not much dust. Um, it's, everything's just more beautiful. Mm -hmm. the, um, so I think that is the time to visit compared to what is arguably more popular period, February or December or any of the dry season months. The, um, no, it's, it's, I think over time people start to realize that, or Europeans mainly will start to realize when it's raining season, it's not a Dutch rain, it's not a Scottish rain, where it rains for three weeks on end. It's more of a tropical thing. It rains an hour, four or five times a week. It's okay. The, um, and once people start to understand that, that in the morning it could be absolutely spectacular blue skies, and later on it rains for an hour, that that's actually a benefit, that it's, it makes it more beautiful. Mm. So, Are there any other ways that the, the industry, the tourism industry, can you can copy what you've done, or do you, are there other things that perhaps should be should be uh, emphasised? Well, I have some wishes to be honest. One is that that hotels will hire Khmer nationals on a full time basis. No more seasonal, no more part time, only full time staff. Um, two, I hope that some of the hotels more proactively hire Khmer nationals for also the good jobs. Cambodia is ready. Um, Cambodia has a skill set. Cambodia has a motivation to take charge, and they should, I think. The, um, that's, that's one. Um, I personally hope that, that more businesses um, indeed plant trees and indeed take the environment more serious and, and indeed simply stop using plastic water bottles and shampoo bottles and all of that nonsense, completely. The alternatives are here, where a lot of people think that, oh my God, but it's so expensive. It's not. It's actually cost effective to be single-use plastic free. Uh, yes, it's an initial investment, absolutely. But afterwards, you don't have to invest anymore. It just keeps on, keeps on paying itself. So it's, it's, it's paying on. So I hope that we as a destination um, we take the environment more serious and we make a hell of a lot bigger effort. You spoke also about Cambodia having tremendous potential. Uh, how do you see that working? Well, there's a, I mean, Cambodia is one of the friendliest countries in the world. It is enormously safe in, 
in Cambodia, in Siem Reap in particular, the service is very good at all levels. Service is arguably better in Cambodia than it would be in the West. The, um, so we have to capitalize on that whilst dealing with the things that we can still learn here, that we can still grow on. If we make, mix those two, the sky is the limit. The, um, so I hope, and, and look, I see some really positive uh, initiatives happening now, uh, that, that I think the future is good, but we just have to keep on going. And we have to continue our efforts and, and perhaps expand the efforts and make even more um, drastic um, initiatives to go back to the lead. Chris, is there anything specifically that you can suggest that would, uh, that would make Cambodia special for tourists? So many different things. Um, probably the easiest and, and look, I'm not going to say spend a fortune of money because that's often not, what, what, not what's needed. But I think if you look at destinations like Japan, Korea, in April, March, April, May, millions of people go there. They plan their, their trip there months in advance. They spend an absolute fortune. Why? They go there for one flower. They go there to look at the Sakura tree. Just a flower, one flower, but it's all over the city. Wouldn't it be spectacular if Shinri takes its lead from that and thinks, you know what? What we can do is we can do a Cambodian flower and I have no clue, but let's plant, I don't know, 20,000 uh, frangipani trees, the white one or the pink one, all over town. Mm -hmm. Simreep will become known really fast as the frangipani city. Or, and imagine the smell, imagine the absolutely beautiful flowers. Um, so tours will come here purely to look at that. And then, oh yeah, by the way, whilst we're here, let's also look quickly at Angkor Wat. Instead of what is right now the case, let's go to see the temples and then what else can we do? Mm. By a very simple and not a large investment um, from a government perspective, but also from an individual perspective, imagine if every inhabitant in Simrib, every business, every initiative plants two, three Fangipani trees, yeah. then we're done. Very That's quickly. it. Yeah. So it's so simple. And then the only thing we have to do afterwards is marketing. Mm -hmm. But that's easy. That's Instagram. That is Facebook. That is all of those channels. So it's a very simple, it's a cost effective, it's a cheap, and it's a very fast initiative that can be implemented within weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And as a result, Cambodia will really, really flourish, literally. Tell me, how has the length of stay affected the business? Well, actually, that's, that's quite funny. The length of stay has gone up. People are now staying longer than they used to, uh, which I think is a testament to the various initiatives that are, have been undertaken over the past years all over Um I Indeed, I, I saw the interview you guys did with Kambal Village, things like that. That is, that's become a destination, which means that gives people something to do, but also the Made in Cambodia market, uh, Sacha in town, uh, Teams Gallery. There's now so many individual initiatives that have happened that means that people have a chance to do something else than just, uh, just the various temples. Uh, of course, it also includes things like the circus, fire the circus, or, or many of the other stuff that is now an, an, an option for people to do mm. with, with children. One of the more recent uh, very popular things that have, have happened uh, is indeed the Vespa tours in the evening, oh, yeah. but also e-bikes. That is spectacular. Yeah. The, um, look, as a Dutch person, I've cycled since Cycle the age of three, yeah. um, but to now explore the various temples on an e-bike, yeah. wow, that is good. <coughs> that should be, that's now possible mm -hmm. thanks to the cycling lanes ah, that were implemented yeah, yeah. during COVID. So, it's all of those pieces of the puzzle that are now really coming together. And and I, this might already happen, I don't know, but otherwise I can foresee cycling, perhaps e-bike cycling trips through Siem Reap, where you go from from the circus to, to Kanda village, to, to Made in Cambodia market, to all of the other stuff. Um, 
and this used to be done by car or by yeah. van. In the future, this might well be go go by e-bike, mm. which is a hell of a lot nicer. So um, it's it's and you're not hot at the end of yes, it. Yes, those are really positive. Over long distances. Yep. Those yeah. are all really positive developments, and something that should be enhanced, supported, and and promoted yeah. by people like me, admittedly. Yes. Yeah. So, no, I'm I'm positive about the future. I have a lot to do, um, but with the right attitude and right motivation, we'll get there. Many people who come to CM Reap for a short stay wish they wish they booked for a longer holiday. In what can be done? What should be done about that? Well, it is changing. Um, as I just mentioned, the length of stay is going up. Indeed, we also hear people, almost every single guest that says, oh, if I wish, if I'd known, mm. I would have stayed longer. I wish we could have stayed, or just simply one day longer here at the pool, or see some of the other things that are now very visible. The, I think this is an organic, um, organic thing that will sort itself out. And, and over time, people will stay longer because there are now so many That's more really options. Things. Another initiative, another item that will drastically actually extend uh, people's, people's stay is Coquer temples. Oh, yeah. um, but Coquer has only recently become known. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still in its infancy shoes with regards to public relations, PR journalists. Um, but over time, that will will enhance and, and lengthen people staying in Cambodia. Mainly because it's two hours away from here. Yep. One way, two hours back. So it's a whole day trip. But yeah, over time that will um, further and drastically enhance stay. I think in, in two, three years from now, people stay for five days in, in Simrip, um, which is more the average by then, I hope. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I fully agree. And, and But it's an organic thing that very naturally will en enhance and, and enlarge and people stay with us. Initiatives um, by, again, various initiatives, various individuals, the giant papa parade, uh, the Bocato event in town recently, the more of this kind of thing that we have, of course, the better it is because it enhances tourism. Um, I hope also the lead time, so from when it's certain till the event day, that that is going to be enlarged. Yep. The more time we have, the more we can promote it. If it's two weeks before, it's there's not much I can do anymore. If it's eight months before, I can very actively, actively push yep. for that. As a, as a person, as a hotel, we've been really lucky. Uh, we've now, uh, since literally this morning, I have confirmation that in the next few weeks, we will once again be allowed and uh, invited to stage a 500 monk blessing right in front of our hotel. Yeah, yeah. This is the fifth time we're doing it. And so it's a big honor. It's, 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 I'm enormously flattered that we're allowed to organize this. Um, that is also very good for marketing and tourism. The giant papa parade, which Jai House has supported for forever, um, is an enormous tourism draw. It, and, and the earlier things like that are announced, the better it is for tourism in general. Um, so yeah, let's do more of it.